All right, chapter five. So today we're going to be talking about functions and what those are, how to write our own functions, why would we use them, why they're so beneficial whenever you're um, coding, whenever you're writing your programs and so on. So intro to functions. You are a little bit familiar with functions, even though you don't know it yet, but we covered them in PLG 101, but they were called modules. So if you recall the chapter that was on modules, this is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So what are functions? Functions is basically just a group of statements, such as your code, that are going to perform a certain task for you. So they are um, they separate the, the big, large program that you have into smaller pieces and that way, if something goes wrong in your program and something is not being executed properly, you will know exactly where the problem is coming from because your program will be separated into functions and each function is going to be responsible for performing a certain task within your program. You will also hear a term divide and conquer, and that represents the fact that we are dividing our big program into smaller pieces and we're conquering the those problems that we have one by one now modularized program again that's the same idea that i'm explaining the modularized program is um whenever inside of your program you have functions that are going to be performing their own tasks and in that case if some of this these tasks are not being performed right you will know exactly where the pro where the problem is coming from now, this is an example of why we would use functions. So you can see you can have a lot of just coding statements. Like imagine that this is just a, a print function or you are uh, asking for input from the user or you're assigning a variable to some value. Doesn't really matter what it is, just any coding statements. If you have this one long uh, list of statements, it's really hard to find where the problem is happening if there is a program problem with your program. However, if you separate your program into little pieces of code, as you can see right here, function one, function two, function three, function four, if something goes wrong in either of uh, it, either one of these functions, you will know exactly which function is causing the problem instead of just looking through all of these lines of code and trying to manually figure out where the problem is. In this way, your uh, compiler that you're using is going to tell you where the problem is happening in function one, function two, function three, or function four. Now, why would we use them? The first one that I told you just now, it's better testing and better debugging. So when something goes wrong, it's easier to figure out what goes wrong. Now it's simpler, you can use simpler code when you're writing those functions because you are separating the big problem into smaller pieces. You can also reuse that code that you already wrote. Um, if you already wrote the function, you can reuse that function later. For example, you have a function that's gonna calculate uh, the taxes that, uh, for example, an employee has to pay to the country, right? And you, for example, you will need to write another program that uses the same idea of calculating taxes. Well, instead of writing that function uh, from the very beginning, you can just take that function and simply copy it and paste it into your new program because it's already doing something beneficial for you. So instead of just writing that new function as a whole, you can just literally copy and paste it. Now, faster development, again, it comes from reusing your code. You don't have to write and type out uh, complicated functions all over again if they are performing the same actions for you. So you can just literally copy and paste it into your new program. And it's easier uh, when you're working in a team and a group of people, because that way uh, you can work on writing two or three functions that's going to benefit the whole program overall. And your teammate or your coworker can work on another two or three functions. So instead of you working on the whole program, um, you guys can separate those that big problem into little chunks and work on those chunks separately. There is two different types of functions in Python, the main two types that you need to know about. There's a void function and there's a val value returning functions. Just um, 
to remember what those functions are and, and why are they different, just think about the names of those functions. So a void function, what is void? Void is nothing, right? Void is nothingness. So a void function will just execute and it's not going to return anything back to you. You're not going to get any value back from that function. However, a value returning function, again, think, look at the name, value returning. So this function is going to return some sort of value to us. And usually you will see input, integer, float uh, functions. Those are the uh, examples of the value returning functions, such as, for example, your function can ask for input from the user, right? Enter your name. After the user enters their name, you need to save that name somewhere. So that function is going to return that name that the user just inputted back to your main program and then you can work with that name later on. However, with void functions, that does not happen. Void function will just either print something on the screen or perform some calcul some sort of calculation, but it's not gonna return anything back to your program. Now, you have to obviously define and call a function. You have to uh, put certain names for your functions and there's a very, not a very strict, um, rule for naming the functions, but there's a couple of them. So first of all, you cannot use any keywords to name your function, such as print, input, any uh, functions that already exist before, existed before in Python, such as, again, print and input. It cannot contain any spaces, the name of the function. Uh, first character has to be a letter on an underscore. So as you can see, the, the rules are pretty much the same as for naming variables. So no letter, uh, first character, either a letter or an underscore. All other characters must be letter, number, or an underscore. And uppercase and lowercase characters are distinct, which that would just tells you that uh, if you have a, um, for example, function that is called print all capital, it is not the same as the function that is called print with all lowercase. So... Python is case sensitive. So that just means, you know, these are two different things. Now here is the um, function definition. So this is the overall standard way of writing functions in Python. So you're going to put a keyword DEF, which stands for definition, which is you telling the program that you are defining a function. So DEF, def uh, keyword, then you're going to put your function name Function name has to be descriptive of what the function is actually performing, what the actual action is, what your function is doing. So function name, then you're going to put your parentheses and you're going to put the um, colon at the end. And then you're going to indent the, the block. Uh, it should indent automatically for you. And then you're going to have um, some sort of actions that are happening inside of that function. And I'm going to show you an example of that. So another couple of terms, function header is the first line of the function. So right here, this one is the function header. And then these, everything that's inside, all of these statements are called the function block. Set of statements that belong together. Now, when you want to call a function, all that you have to do is just type the name of that function with the parentheses. And that's it. So... As you can see here, this function name. So if you get rid of this and the DEF, this is how you would call the function. Function name and the parentheses after it. Whenever you call a function, what's gonna happen? So your program is gonna be a lot of lines of code and what in your interpreter will be doing is gonna be jumping from line to line. And whenever it sees that you're calling a function, it's gonna go back and look through all of your code to find where the definition of that function was. So it's gonna find that function and gonna execute whatever's inside of that function. After the execution of the function ends, it's gonna go back to uh, where you called that function from. Main function, main function is called, um, you will see DEF main a lot of times. DEF main, just means that this is the beginning of your program. So this is the very beginning of your program, the main method, the main function inside of your program. Everything else that you're typing out, everything else that you're gonna be writing is gonna be inside of your uh, main function. 
Again, each block must be indented. However, that's going to be happen automatically. If that doesn't happen automatically for you, um, you probably mess something up in the function definition. You either forgot the um, colon or you forgot the parentheses or the DEF or a space. So if the lines are not indented automatically for you. Just look at your function definition and see if there's something wrong with that. Uh, let's see. This is a hierarchy chart. So and uh, here you will see that again, main is the very top. So everything else is included inside of the main function. Now we have all of these different functions that are inside of main. So get input, calculate gross pay, calculate overtime, calculate with holdings, calculate net pay. So all of these exist within the main function. However, some of these, you can go even further. You can expand the functions even more. Inside of the get input functions, there are two more functions, get hours worked, get hourly rate. And inside of the calculate with holdings are also calculate taxes and calculate benefits. So this hierarchy chart is very useful when you're just designing your program with functions and you're just trying to figure out where each function needs to be located. Pass keyword, another useful thing that exists in Python. If you want to just create the skeleton of your program, if you don't do not want to define any functions yet, you can just write the definition of the function that defines step one, and then you can use the keyword pass. The keyword pass is used to create empty functions. And that way um, it's, it's very useful for the very beginning of the design of your program. So you do not have to write the functions out. You can just um, define as many functions as you want, use the keyword pass, and those will work just fine. They will not be doing anything to you, obviously, because they're empty. But in this case, it's just useful for designing and, and seeing how those functions exist within your program. Local variables, again, something that you probably are familiar with already from PLD 101. Local variable is a variable that exists inside of your function. That's all there is to it. So any variables that exist inside of any functions, those are called local variables. And scope is another term uh, that you are familiar with. It's just um, the part of a program in which a variable may be accessed. And in simpler words, is who can see that variable and who can interact with that variable. If your um, variable exists inside of the function, if it is a local variable, the only um, code that can interact with that function is the code with inside of that function. Uh, let's see, I just said that. Argument, okay, argument, very important. Argument is whatever you're sending into a function. So it is possible to send uh, multiple arguments or just one argument to your function. For example, if you want to perform some calculations, um, you're going to be sending some arguments into the function. And here's an example. So you can see we have our main function right here. Everything else is inside it. We have a variable called value that, that is assigned to five. Now we have a function called show double. As you can see, we're calling a function show double and we're sending that value variable into the function as an argument. However, let's look at the definition of our function and see what the function is actually doing. So here's our function definition, def show double number. So the value will go exactly into the number slot. They do not have to match. They do not have to be the same name. It doesn't matter because your function will know immediately where that number has to go. So let's look at what it's doing right here. Result equals number multiplied by two. So anything that you're sending into the show double function is going to be multiplied by two. And then after that, we're going to print whatever uh, is the result of our expression. So in this case, we're passing five into our function. It's going to go right here, five. And then what's going to happen, five is going to be multiplied by two. So the result is going to be 10. And what's going to be printed at the end is 10. Parameter value variable. So parameter variable is um, where the argument is coming. So as you can see here, value is our argument. However, number is our parameter. So these are just two different uh, terms for calling whatever value we're passing into our function. So in this case, 
value is our argument, number is our parameter. Essentially, these are the same thing. They're performing the same function, but just to differ, just to, to differentiate the two, um, that's why they're called differently. This one is an argument. Whatever you're passing is an argument. Whatever is receiving is the parameter. You can see right here, again, it's the same idea. It's the same code that we just saw. Value five, number five, they're both pointing to the same number. Even though they're different, they're different names, value and number, they are still pointing to the same value of five. You can also write a function that's going to accept multiple arguments. Uh, however, you just have to uh, write as many parameters as there are arguments that you want to pass. Let me show you an example of that. So you can see right here, we are printing the sum of 12 and 45 is, and then we're calling a function show sum. And we're sending two arguments, 12 and 45. The 12 will go correspondingly into number one parameter and 45 will go into number two parameter. And then after that, what's gonna happen? We're gonna add number one and number two together and we're just gonna print the result. So in this case, what's gonna happen? 12 is going to be added to 45, and we're going to print 57 after the calculations are performed. So the result of this will be 57 printed right here. If you make any changes inside of your function to that parameter value, it's not going to affect your program. So as you can see here, if, for example, you want to change, we are passing 12 here and 45 here. If you want to change these numbers, all that you have to do is just specify that you want to change them. For example, num1 instead of 12, if we wanted it to be 13, or uh, num2 if we wanted it to be 46, that is also possible. You can do that. These, no these two numbers are not going to be affected, but whatever by whatever is happening inside of the function. Again, think of a scope, think of the local variables, think of the idea that anything that's going on inside of your function is not gonna affect anything that's happening outside of that function. Keyword arguments. Again, another thing that exists in Python, you can specify um, which parameter has to be assigned which value. And it's always easier to just show an example of it. So you can see here, this is how you're specifying that you want these uh, parameters A, B, C, D to be keyword only parameters by using a star. So you're going to put a star, you're going to put a comma, and then you're going to specify which parameters you want to be keyword only. Now, in this case, if everything that's after the star is going to be keyword only parameters. And what that means, you will just have to call your function like this. You're going to specify which parameter is assigned to which value. As you can see here at the this example right here, we're not specifying anything, right? We're not typing num1 equals 12 comma instead of right here, 12 and 45. We're not typing num2 equals 45. No, we're not doing any of that. We're just putting 12 and 45 because num1 and num2 are not keyword parameters. Now, right here, we're specifying that we want a, b, c, and d to be keyword only parameters. That is why we have to call the function like this. a equals 10, b equals 20, c equals 30, d equals 40. If you would just call it with va values, 10, 20, 30, 40, this was, will cause an error, big error, because you, we specified right here that we want these parameters to be keyword only. So you can see this will not work and this will not work either. You can put a star anywhere, anywhere within your parameter list. It does not matter where you're gonna put it. However, the only thing that matters is everything that comes after it is gonna be keyword only parameters. So A and B are not keyword only parameters. So you can put just, just a value, doesn't really matter. However, everything that goes after the star, such as parameters C and D, have to be specified like this. C equals to whatever value, D equals also to whatever value you want it to equal. 
positional only. So positional only parameters, again, it's the same idea as, it, so it's the opposite. So keyword only parameters are defined like this, a equals 10. Positional only parameters will be just you passing a 10 without specifying which parameter you want this value to be assigned to. Again, uh, an example, you will put a slash. Everything that comes in front of the slash is going to be positional only parameters. Again, you do not have to specify this because the default parameters in Python are positional only. So this is just for you to know that this exists. However, you do not have to specify this. Right here, look, A, B, C, and D, uh, uh, we only have them as positional only parameters. So this function call will work 10, 20, 30, 40. So it's the default. It's everything that I showed you so far prior to the keyword only parameters. Now, however, this way will not work, calling your function this way, because this one is a keyword only parameter, but we did not specify that this is a keyword only parameter. To specify that, we would have to put a star right here and put a comma. And then we would specify that D is a keyword only parameter. Then, only then, this function call would work. Again, the same idea as with the star, the slash can appear anywhere that you want. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how you call the function after that. So in this case, a and B are positional only parameters. So you will only use regular val values to uh, send into this function. However, C and D can either be keyword arguments or positional arguments. It doesn't really matter. You can either perform C equals 10 and D equals 20, or you can just put 10 and 20. So it's the same idea. Let's see, default arguments. Okay, so very useful when you're calculating taxes. If there is a value that's going to be used throughout your function and will not change, you can put it as a default default argument. In this case, we have a function that's called show tax, and we're sending a price into it. Where price is a parameter, so we're going to send some sort of argument into the price. And then we have a default argument of tax rate. Tax rate equals 0 0.007 in this case. And now tax rate will not change. You will not change the tax rate. It stays there. Um, so the 0 0.07, you know that it will always exist inside of that function. And in this case, what's happening, we're just calculating what, what the taxes are on whatever price we need to calculate. And then we're just printing the tax is whatever that um, number that we calculated is. And let's see. And again, the useful thing about default arguments, even though we technically have two parameters, price and tax rate, we only have to specify the one that is not the default argument. So we only have to specify the price. Even though we have two, one and two, right, parameters, right here when we're calling the function, we're only specifying the price because tax rate is automatically assigned to 0 0.07. Um, let's see, default arguments, global variables. All right, global variables and global constants. So again, you are familiar with constants. You are familiar with global variables. Global variable is a variable that's created outside of any functions. So if you have a variable that is created inside of the main function, but outside of any other function, that's what we call a global variable. Those are not a good idea. Using them is not a very good idea because they might cause a lot of issues down the road. So instead of using global variables, uh, you I would recommend using global constants. Global constants is the same idea as a global variable. However, it cannot change. So a global constant will stay the same throughout the execution of your program. Now, void function, value returning function. Okay, okay, we're moving on into the standard library functions. So the standard library functions, think of them as the functions that are already written for you that exist in Python, and you do not have to do anything to uh, use them. The only thing that you need to do is to call them, but you do not have to write those functions, such as print, input, range, 
Remember all of those functions that you have already been using, such as print to display something on the screen, input to get some input from the user, from their keyboard, and range will specify the um, range of numbers that you want to use. For example, zero to 10 will give you a range of numbers from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, all of these are functions, right? Because they are performing some sort of action for you. However, uh, you do not have to write them yourself. They are already pre-written into Python. Now, modules. Modules are uh, where those functions are being stored. So modules, uh, think of them as a compilation of all of the functions that exist. And there are uh, they are separated by um, type. So in this case, we're focusing right now on standard library functions. So there is a module that uh, is called standard library functions in Python. And those exist within, uh, such as print, input range, those all exist within the standard library module. Now there's also a mass module let me show you. Oh, we're going to start with the random module first. So the random module is a module that includes all of the functions that will give you uh, a chance to generate random numbers. So if your program needs to generate random numbers, you will use the random module. You have to use a dot notation when you're calling a function that belongs to a certain module. So in this case, it's random. So whenever you're calling your function, this is how it's going to happen. As you can see here, uh, random dot so you're going to put the module name first random then you're going to put a period and you're going to put whatever function you want to call from that module and let's look at what rand int is rand int just think of it as random integer so if you want to generate a random integer you will use the rand int function and you can specify the range from which you want that random integer to be taken in this case, we're taking a random integer and in, within a range of numbers from one to a hundred. So it can literally give you any random number from that range, 47, 51, 99, it, you never know. It's gonna just give you a random number from this range. Uh, let's see. Rand range, uh, it's the same idea as using the range function. It's gonna return to you a randomly selected integer from that range. So it's the same idea as rent int. It's just a little bit of a different way to um, generate that number. Now, random function, uh, it's going to return a random float from range of 0, 0.0 to 1.0. So you it does not receive any arguments. So what you're going to do, you're going to do random. You're going to do random dot random. I know it's a little bit, we're duplicating it, but this function will return a random number from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. And uniform is going to return a random float, but then it's going to specify, you can specify what range you want that float to come from. So you're going to put random dot uniform, uniform, and then you can specify, for example, if we want it to be from 1 to 10. This will give us a random float, from one to from a range of numbers one to ten. Uh, let me see. Is recording? All right. Whenever we want to write our own value returning functions, I'll go a little bit faster through this. It, it's nothing new that you haven't seen yet. So the format, the general format, is the same idea as uh, writing your own function. However, at the end, you have to specify which value you want to return. Let me show you an example of that. So you can see we have a function called sum and we're sending two numbers into it, number one and number two. Then we're calculating the number one plus number two. We're calculating the sum of them and we're storing that number inside of a result variable. After that, instead of printing anything, we want to return that number back to the main program. All that you have to do to return that value, you have to put the keyword return and specify the name of the variable that you want to return back to the function. So nothing too complicated, just return whatever you want to return. Um, let's see, you can also return functions that, you can also write functions that return strings. The data type does not matter in Python. You can return anything that you want back to your function, such as float, integer, 
Boolean variable, it doesn't matter. You can return anything. So in this case, what's happening, we're writing a function called get name, and it doesn't have any parameters, as you can see here. So it's not going to accept any arguments. However, uh, we are asking the user for input inside of that function, and we're storing that input inside of the name variable. So we're saying enter your name. Whatever user enters is going to be stored inside of the name, and then we are returning that name back to our main program uh, whenever we um, we want to, if we want to work with whatever user provided to us. Boolean function again. As I, I just, as I just said, you can return a Boolean variable. It's going to return either true or false. Remember, Boolean uh, data type can only hold a value of true or false. Uh, you can also return multiple values. So it doesn't have to be just limited to one. All that you have to do, just put a comma. So return whatever value number one, comma, value number two, comma, value number three, comma, so on, so on, and so on. Um, well, you can also return none. None just means no value. So if you want to return nothing back to your function, you can also do that. Uh, it's possible to use that none uh, to test for errors inside of your code. So in that case, you know, if nothing is being returned back to your program, that means that something went wrong. So you can see here, divide, we know that we cannot divide by zero, right? It's not possible. It's going to cause an error inside of your uh, compiler. So if uh, the user is sending number one to be a number, for example, 10, and number two to be a number zero, we know that's going to cause a problem. So immediately we're checking if number two is zero, do not do anything, just return none. In that case, we know that there is a problem. The user enters zero. However, if the number two is not zero, for example, let's say the number two is number two, is two we're just going to divide number one by number two, and then we're going to return that result. So the result that's going to happen, 10 is going to be divided by two, result is going to be five, and we're going to return five back to our main program. Math module, okay, this is uh, the one that I was talking about. To use this uh, module, you have to put import math statement at the very top of your program before the main. So at the very first uh, line, you have to put import math. And these are all of the functions that are going to be available to you whenever you import that math module. So you can you can find the arc cosine, arc sine, arc tangent. So all of these complicated math functions that uh, you might need or you might not need these I'm just telling you that these exist within Python but you need to import the mass module to use them and again the idea of using them is the same you will have to use uh, math then the name of the module math then you will put a period and you're going to put whatever value is uh, whatever function you want to use in this case we're calling math.py and this will return 3.14 to us. Let's see, string functions, menu-driven programs. We, we covered this topic already in PLD 101, menu-driven programs. Menu-driven programs is gonna display a list in front of you, and then you can choose uh, which operation uh, you want to perform. However, with the use of functions, you can specify that, for example, if user types one, a function number one is going to execute. If user types two, function number two will execute. That is why the slide is here, just to show you that uh, by using functions, it's easier to write menu-driven programs. All right, that was it for today.